Greetings, beloved, and welcome to Narrowgate Channel, another beautiful day our Father God has made. We are rejoicing and we are glad in it, hallelujah. The joy of the Lord is our strength. I welcome those who just joined Narrowgate Channel. Let us learn together its operation. Give Jesus your 100%. In 2023, the door of the ark is closing. The honor lies on individuals. If you want to be part of the ark, you have to run for your life. Our Father is wrapping up. He said, Behold, I come quickly. Hold fast, which thou hast, that no man take thy crown. Praise the name of the Lord. We serve a powerful God, beloved, the great I am, the one and only risen King. In him I hid all the treasures of knowledge and wisdom. Hallelujah. We continue, beloved, with part three of the love between Jesus and his wife. Just to give you a bit of recap. In part two, I explained that the Lord used prophet Hosea together with his wife and children in chapter one to prophesy or to depict a picture of what he is going to do to the 10 tribes, to the Northern kingdom, Israel in Samaria. And we know that the 10 tribes were scattered first. Their kings, all 19 of them, did evil in the sight of the Lord. They were burning children alive, sacrificing to Chemosh and to Moloch and to Baal. They were worshipping the host of heaven, the queen of heaven. They were worshipping the sun. They were worshipping the grove. We have covered that in the sins of Israel. So God used the names of the children of prophet Hosiah to prophesy to what he is going to do to the ten tribes, to the northern kingdom. And he scattered them. The Assyrians took them into captivity. So the last two verses in chapter 1, God said he will gather them again. Because up to now they are still scattered. They will be gathered in the three and a half years of the seven years of tribulation by Jesus and his wife. In chapter 2, we see the Lord is not happy about this woman. In chapter 2, we get an understanding of who is the wife of the Lord. The Lord is not happy about this woman who committed adultery. He said, she is not my wife, neither am I her husband. And I shared with you that the Lord gave me messages twice in different occasions that I must share about the putting away of his wife, the divorcing of his wife. And the getting together again. So in the beginning of chapter 2, beloved, when you continue to read, you can see that the Lord is not happy, is grieved about his wife who went into Hodom, who committed adultery and fall in love with other men. And have children of Hodom. And we get to understand, beloved, that this wife forgot who she is. That is what the word of God says. So we get an understanding that the bride did not know who she was. So she lived a normal life like you and I. She fell in love. She had lovers. That's what the word of God says. Lovers. Meaning she did not only have one relationship. And the word of God says that God blessed her with the oil, the corn, and the wool. But she did not know that it was her husband who blessed her with what she had. That's what the word of God says. Again, we get to see the love of God in this woman's life, beloved. That even though God knew that 
she was going to fall in love with other men. He made a way for her to come back to him. The word of God says that he hedged up her way with thorns and make a war that she find not her path. That when she go after her lovers, when she pursue her lovers, she will not find them. And he took away the wool and the oil that he has given her. He stripped everything from her. And he said, none of her lovers will deliver her from his hand. So we get an understanding that she goes through trials and temptations, frustrations of life. Her lovers will not keep her happy. The word of God says she will then remember that she was better off with her husband. And she repent. She goes to the Lord. She asks for forgiveness. And it was the Lord's plan to take away everything. To bring her back to himself. And the word of God says he allowed her into the wilderness. So we get to understand that this woman was taken into the wilderness where she discovered who she is and it was there in the wilderness where god said that she will not remember the names of her lovers anymore praise the name of the lord that's why i said we can only assume that she really went through serious challenges while in the wilderness and this is expected beloved because this woman she is going to carry serious duties beloved heavy responsibility of gathering israel together with her husband so she really has to go through severe training praise the name of the lord and again, while she is in the wilderness, he will betroth her in righteousness and in faithfulness. And she will not continue with her hodom anymore. She will be faithful to her husband until they get married. Praise the name of the Lord. That is just a high level summary. So, I am going to read now Hosea chapter 3. Before I go to Hosea chapter 3, I want to read again in the word of God from the book of Isaiah chapter 50 verse 1. This is about their divorce. Just to share another scripture to you for better understanding. Isaiah chapter 50 verse 1 says, Thus said the Lord, Where is the bill of your mother's divorcement, whom I have put away? Or which of my creditors is it to whom I have sold you? Behold, for your iniquities have you sold yourself, and for your transgressions is your mother put away. That's the word of God, beloved. It is straightforward. The Lord is saying she was put away because of her transgressions. Because of her adultery, the Lord put her away. God is holy, beloved. Only after she repented and went back unto the Lord, that is when he took her back. And the Lord did not just take her back and said, oh, my wife, I'm happy you are back. That's it. Just wait for me until I come to fetch you and get married. No, he took her to the wilderness. He stripped everything from her. So she suffered lots of trials and uh, challenges. You can imagine this is someone who was blessed by the Lord and the Lord took everything from her. He stripped everything, pushed all her lovers away. So we can understand the challenges this woman 
had to face the separation from the people because she's separated, taken to the wilderness, going through all these trials, dying to serve each and every day. And by the time the Lord is done with her, she will call him my husband. She will forget all her lovers. He will betroth her in righteousness. Praise the name of the Lord. I am now going to read the book of Hosea chapter 3. The word of God says, Then said the Lord unto me, Go yet, love a woman beloved of her friend, yet an adulteress according to the love of the Lord toward the children of Israel, who look to other gods and love flagons of wine. So I bought her to me for 15 pieces of silver and for an homer of barley and then half homer of barley. And I said unto her, Thou shalt abide for me many days. Thou shalt not play the harlot, and thou shalt not be for another man. For I will also be for thee. For the children of Israel shall abide many days without a king, and without a prince, and without a sacrifice, and without an image, and without an effort, and without teraphim. And afterward shall the children of Israel return and seek the Lord their God and David their king and shall fear the Lord and his goodness in the latter days. That's the word of God, beloved. In chapter 3, the Lord is speaking to Hosea again. He said to him, go love a woman who is loved by another man. I have shared in chapter 1 that as we continue to unpack the prophecies, you will understand why Solomon's Songs chapter 8 says, the love that Jesus has for his wife is as strong as death. We are talking about the creator of heaven and earth, beloved. His wife committed adultery to a point of having children. She had lovers. In our own minds, beloved, we will say, oh, Jesus must just get another wife who is perfect like him. Yes, and that is what most of the people have in mind when they hear about the bride of Christ. They have their own perfect woman somewhere this woman was a sinner who committed adultery against her husband, gave birth to children. She forgot about her husband. She was running after her lovers. She did not even realize that it's her husband who blessed her with what she had until he stripped everything from her. So we see in chapter 3, the Lord is telling prophet Hosea to go love a woman who is loved by another man. It is said, beloved, that the Lord loves this woman so much, but the woman is loved by another man. The word of God says an adulteress. Go and love an adulteress, this woman who's being loved by another man. And again, he spoke about Israel that he loves Israel regardless of their hodom, them going astray, worshipping idols, but he loved them still. So he's telling Hosea, go and love her. It is the same thing that Israel is doing to me. Praise the name of the Lord. So in verse 2, the word of God says, so I brought her to me for 15 pieces of silver and for an homer of barley, and then half homer of barley. That's the word of God, beloved. I want us to go back to the books of law for us to understand chapter 2. And I will share with you what our father said regarding verse 2. When you read in Exodus chapter 21 verse 32, if an ox pushes 
a slave. The owner of that ox must pay 30 shekels of silver to the owner of that slave. So 30 shekels was the amount that was charged for the slaves. So I want us to follow. In the book of Hosea, chapter 3, verse 2, he said he paid 15 shekels of silver. So he paid half for her. So according to the book of law, it's supposed to be 30 shekels for a slave. So let us now go to see what happened to the balance. Now let us go to Numbers chapter 5. Again, the book of law and see what is the penalty if a man suspects that his wife is unfaithful. I want to read the word of God from the book of Numbers 5 verse 15. Then shall the man bring his wife unto the priest, and he shall bring her offering for her, the tenth part of an ephah of barley meal. He shall pour no oil unto it, nor put frankincense thereon, for it is an offering of jealousy, an offering of memorial, bringing iniquity to remembrance. So going back now to the book of Hosea chapter 3 verse 2, we see that he paid half the amount that is supposed to be paid for a slave, which is 30 shekels of silver. He paid only 15. So the other half was paid by this Bali because the sin that she committed is related to unfaithfulness according to the law. So the husband has to take an offering of barley to the priest. So the other half was in the form of barley to fulfill the law. And for us to have a better understanding of what I'm sharing, I will read the word of God from the book of Matthew 26, verse 14 to 15. Then one of the twelve, called Judas Iscariot, went unto the chief priests and said unto them, What will ye give me, and I will deliver him unto you? And they covenanted with him for thirty pieces of silver. So thirty pieces of silver was what was paid for a slave, according to the book of Exodus chapter 21 verse 32. And this is what was given to Judas Iscariot as well, who sold Jesus. So he was paid that same amount that is paid for a slave. Let me share with you what our father told me a while ago about his wife. He said that I paid for her. She is my wife. Praise the name of the Lord even as the book of Hosea chapter 3 verse 2 says that he paid 15 shekels of silver. In total, it's supposed to be 30. So the other half was paid in a form of barley. So he paid in full for her. He redeemed her, beloved, from slavery. Yes, the wife was in slavery. Because she has went astray from her husband. She was serving other gods. That's why in chapter 2, he referred to them as Balim. She had other lovers. The wife was living in sin of adultery. She was far away from her husband. Embracing the doctrine of Jezebel. The doctrine of the Nicolaitan. The doctrine of Balaam. Lukewarmness. You name it, it is there in chapter 2. So he had to go and redeem her. He paid a full price for her. Praise the name of the Lord. So that is what verse 2 is talking about. He paid a full price for her. He redeemed her. He took her out from the slavery of sin. 
She was in slavery of sin. She was caged by the devil living in sin. He paid the price for her. He took her out from the slavery. Praise the name of the Lord. Verse 3. And I said unto her, Thou shalt abide for me many days. Thou shalt not play the harlot, and thou shalt not be for another man. So will I be for thee. Verse 3 gives us an understanding that she will not play a harlot anymore, meaning that she has repented. The Lord took her into the wilderness and betrothed her in righteousness and in faithfulness. So she will sit and wait for her husband. She will not be running after her lovers anymore. By the time the Lord is done with her, beloved, she will be faithful. And we know by now, beloved, that we are expecting our father very soon. So I will assume that she is done with her training. She is waiting for her husband. As the word of God says that she will not play the harlot anymore. She will be of her husband and the husband will be for her. Verse 4, it says, For the children of Israel shall abide many days without a king, and without a prince, and without a sacrifice, and without an image, and without an effort, and without teraphim. Afterwards shall the children of Israel return and seek the Lord their God, and David their king, and shall fear the Lord and his goodness in the latter days. That's the powerful word of God, beloved, a prophecy for Israel and for the wife of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. She abided without her husband for many days as well. Due to her adultery, due to her iniquities, the Lord puts her away. He divorced her. And even as the children of, of Israel, due to their iniquities, the Lord scattered them. And they do not have a king anymore. But in verse 5, the word of God says, The children of Israel shall return and seek the Lord their God. So the same with the bride. She returned and sought the Lord, beloved. And they reconciled even as verse 3 said, Thou shalt not play the harlot, and thou shalt not be for another man. So will I also be for thee. So Jesus and his wife reconciled. So Israel as well will return unto the Lord. And David shall be their king. In the latter days, beloved, the dispensation that we are in, we know that God will gather Israel. All of the 144,000 will repent and return unto the Lord. The same way that the wife returned back to her husband, she repented and he betrothed her in righteousness and in faithfulness. So beloved, we get to see that indeed there is no excuse that humanity will give to God. God reconciled with his wife. Who committed adultery, beloved? She went back to him and he forgave her and they're going to get married. So those who are in second marriages, giving excuses, the wife of the Lord has children from another man, yet the Lord took her back, beloved, and he is going to marry her. What excuse are we going to give? Indeed, we can see that this love is as strong as death. And the jealousy is indeed as cruel as the grave because he went flat out and destroyed everything that was standing in a way for his wife to come back to him. And it worked. He brought her back to himself where he wants her to be. So we can see, beloved, that there will be no excuse for those who are continuing in adultery. Praise the name of the Lord. 
indeed we can learn a lot beloved from our lord and savior jesus christ this is the kind of love that god intended from the beginning beloved we can see that jesus was not willing to give up on his wife regardless beloved he made sure that she comes back to him and this is the love that god wants us to have as well beloved between husband and wife no excuses so i will end it here for part three we will continue with part four in the book of ezekiel i love you all stay blessed as we continue to learn bye bye